Ah yes, the new iPhone 13. I'm sure there's plenty of you that have this yearly dilemma. The should I upgrade my iPhone dilemma. It's one that wrecks havoc on unsuspecting buyers wallets all around the globe by the thousands. And who knows, this video may or may not convince you to either upgrade or it may help you to come to your senses and realize you don't have to throw Apple another nine or so Benjamins. The aim of this video is to go in depth on all of the changes and compare all the new changes directly and head to head against the previous iPhone 12 line. Now remember, the regular 12 and 12 mini have the exact same internals, just different sizing. Same thing with the 13 line. The mini and regular 13 are the same phone, just different sizes. For the sake of this video, we'll be comparing my mint green iPhone 12 mini versus the all new Starlight iPhone 13 mini. This video is also really useful for those coming from older generations of iPhones such as the 12, 11, or maybe even something older. In any case, this is gonna be a good one. We'll have a camera test in here, performance tests, and much, much more. So without further ado, let's hop right into the intro. Okay, so I'm not going to waste any time whatsoever because I already have made an unboxing and first impression video on the iPhone 13 line. If you haven't watched it yet, click the card at the top right as it'll give you a ton more information about the 13 mini with all the new features so that I don't have to repeat myself over and over. So first on the agenda, we have to talk about the obvious changes and here with the new 13 models, exterior changes are few and far between. Twitter was roasting saying the only changes were made to the now diagonal placement of the back camera and and thanks to some of my brilliant subscribers, I was able to figure out why. You see, when we put them side by side, you'll be able to notice that the new 13 mini and iPhone 13 now sport larger camera sensors that let in considerable more light on the wide camera sensor, hence the placement. Since the sensors are now larger, had Apple left them in the same vertical placement, this would then skew the proportions of the entire camera square module and would cause some of the MagSafe accessories, like the MagSafe wallets, to no longer be compatible due to the increase in size on the camera module, specifically on something like the iPhone 13 mini. So that's the reasoning for the diagonal placement. But thanks to the new sensors, photos taken under dim lit conditions will appear lighter and the detail in darker photos will be revealed a lot better. In in fact, the new wide camera captures 47% more light for better photos and videos. That all sounds nice and all, but how does that translate into the real world? Well, no worries. I took some pictures and videos of stuff around my studio, including videos and pictures of Bean, my cat. I swear she's in love with the camera, you can tell. Under good natural lighting, the photos are almost indistinguishable. They both look great and the difference can be spotted a little better when trying to take pictures at night or in areas with low lighting as you'll be able to see by the following photos. You tell me, do you see any big differences? Additionally, there are some software improvements that you get on the new 13 line, including photographic styles and cinematic mode. The latter, in my opinion, being the cooler feature. Cinematic mode is exactly what you'd think. You can imagine going to the cinema or movie theater and seeing how well those huge Hollywood directors use camera techniques to blur certain subjects and then quickly change to focus on another subject. It was possible before, but wasn't as clean as it is now. Take a look at a sample demo I took using the cinematic mode. As you can see, I purposely got my Sid Wilson pop figurine in the foreground and then a small indoor plant more far back towards the background. As you can see, this is a really easy and creative way to guide your audience's eyes to different subjects in your shot. Sometimes though, the bokeh effect doesn't match up quite right, but over the months, Apple will only continue to improve this feature. It's kind of like on portrait mode where sometimes you get that wonky outline around the subjects when it shouldn't be there. Then there's photographic styles, which really should have been renamed to smart filters because it's essentially like putting a semi-permanent filter lens on your camera. You basically choose from one of four or five different styles ranging from cooler to warmer filters and they'll automatically be applied every time you snap a shot and will be balanced so that skin tones don't look too fake. This process will all happen automatically by the way, but don't worry, you can always swap out your style. 
turn it off completely and can always edit your pictures afterwards if you are unhappy with the desired results. It's a cool concept that thanks to machine learning, applies the filter of your choice to the right places so that your pictures come out looking better than ever. And for the first time on the non-pro line, for those that love to record in HDR, the 13 and 13 mini now supports Dolby Vision HDR video recording up to 4K resolution at 60 FPS. Before, on the 12 line, you could still record HDR, but were limited to 30 FPS. The front camera remains essentially unchanged with just some minor tweaks. We now feature Smart HDR 4, a more advanced and sophisticated AI system that combines with the Nero engine to always produce top quality pictures when snapping shots on iPhone. You'd be surprised at how much machine learning and AI goes behind the photos you take. There's multiple layers to a photograph and it's amazing to see how far Apple has come in the world of photography, sometimes arguably taking better shots than some professional DSLRs. The front camera also gets the same treatment in terms of software features as the back camera including photographic styles so your selfie game is always on immaculate mode as well as cinematic mode for videos. But taking a closer look at the front camera side by side against the 12 mini and you'll begin to notice another rather subtle difference, the notch. Yep, that's right, for years, maybe even since the introduction of the iPhone 10, the notch has remained unchanged until now. The change is subtle, but after years of seeing that dreadful, enormous notch, the difference is quite noticeable, especially on the mini series. You see, the notch was the same size across all models, so it didn't matter if you got the 12 Pro Max or the 12 Mini, the notch was still the same size. So, basic maths tells us that the notch will naturally take up more screen real estate on the smaller devices, and the notch looked massive on the 12 Mini. There was barely any room to add anything over here at the top corners, like look at the battery in indicator and time barely fitting up there. So while the notch was reduced slightly, it does make a difference at least for me. The placement of the microphone for receiving phone calls has also been slightly modified and now sits towards the top instead of sitting in the middle of the notch. So externally, those are all the differences we have. So what's new under the hood? Well, we go from Apple's own A14 Bionic to the all new A15 Bionic chip, which features a new six core CPU with two performance and four efficiency cores and an all new four core GPU. The newer chipset brings with it not only performance improvements, but also battery efficiency improvements too. And Apple does claim that you should be able to squeeze out an extra hour and a half on the mini variants and an extra two and a half hours on the iPhone 13 versus the regular 12. Those claims, of course, will be tested in depth, but not in this video. Oh no. For those of you that are veterans on my channel, you know a battery drain test is sure to be on the way very soon. It is on the schedule, so guys, make sure to subscribe to my channel with bell notifications so that you don't miss out on that exciting drain test. We'll have to wait and see how accurate these claims are, but in terms of raw benchmarks, we ran some Geekbench tests to see just how much better the A15 is versus the A14. Keep in mind, both iPhones are running on iOS 15.0.1. We ran a test on the CPU and then one for the GPU. On the CPU side, we see modest gains with a single core score of 1591 on the 12 mini and a multi-core score of 3904. Compare that to the 13 1739 for single core and 4588 for multi-core. So as you can see, a modest improvement to raw performance power. On the graphics side, we also ran a GPU test for those interested in using their iPhones for gaming on Geekbench. On the graphics side, we also ran a GPU test for those interested in using their iPhones for gaming, light photo editing, or maybe even video editing small clips for iMovie. As expected, the 13 mini bested the 12 mini by a reasonable margin, boasting a metal score of 10,501 versus 9,298 for the 12 mini. This means gaming on the iPhone 13 line will look crisper, smoother, and with less drop frames as compared to the 12 mini. One key takeaway is that while the A15 is better, it only beats the 12 line by a margin of about 13% or so. So ask yourself if a 13% improvement is worth the upgrade. I even tried to do a speed test opening several apps simultaneously while performing small tasks like exporting a small video on iMovie and running some benchmarks. It was interesting to see the performance improvements side by side, but notice that the 13 mini initially lagged behind while opening the first app, which was Geekbench, but blazed through the benchmark test and even secured the lead despite the slow start. 
where the 13 Mini solidified its W was during the export test on iMovie. For some reason, the 13 Mini blazed through this one and exported the video in a much, much faster time as compared to the 12 Mini. And as you'd expect, the 13 Mini blazed through the rest of the apps and finished the speed test in 6 minutes and 26 seconds, whereas the 12 still came in at an impressive 8 minutes and 44 seconds. Had it not been for the export test, the 12 Mini would have surely not been too far behind, but it goes to show that the new A15 chip is better at rendering and exporting videos, especially given the increase to multi-core and metal scores as compared to the predecessor. Apart from the performance gains, battery improvements, and camera spec bumps, and the notch, what else is there? Well, given that recording HDR at 60 FPS isn't exactly light on storage, Apple graciously has now offered us double the base starting storage, which honestly, in my opinion, is one of the highlight features here. We now start at 128 gigabytes regardless of what sizing you choose for $699 or $799 for the 13 mini and 13 respectively and can be configured all the way up to 512 gigabytes. So with everything we've discussed, the lingering question still remains. Who is this iPhone 13 for and should you upgrade? Well, if this is your first time ever to iPhone and you're considering picking it up, do it. You will not be disappointed. Tons, and I mean tons of people adore the iPhone thanks to their superior cameras and software that thanks to machine learning, make your photographs, videos, and selfies look spectacular. And with all the new camera improvements, this is a photo lover's dream. And with a starting storage of 128 gigabytes, you'll have plenty of room to shoot photos and videos to your heart's content. With your choice of five different colors and two sizes being the 5.4 inch mini or 6.1 inch regular 13, there will be a combination for everyone. What about those upgrading? Listen, if you're coming from the 12 line, it's really, really hard to say this is worth it. The double storage is probably the best part because I personally have a mirrorless Sony camera, so if I need a pro camera that's got me set for everything, then that's there. The bigger sensors and cool software features are nice, but not enough to justify dishing out another $800 plus when your 12 camera is just as good, only now slightly inferior. The A15 is faster and does come with battery efficiencies. See, for me, the 12-ish percentage improvement isn't enough to entice me, but the extra 2.5 hours on the 13 or 1.5 hours of extra juice on the 13 mini might just be enough to convince some people. I think Apple, yet again, did the bare minimum where there were enough enticing features to try to convince you, think better cameras, longer battery, and double the storage, and yet these are pretty standard and quite honestly basic upgrades that just seem routine nowadays. We want to see innovation on the cheaper line as well, not just the pro line. So my verdict, if you have a 12, you'll probably be okay skipping this one. I'd even say if you have an 11, this one still might be a pass, but anything older than an SC or a 10s can expect to see substantial changes. As it is, I just don't think iPhone 12 owners will get too much value from this upgrade, but don't get me wrong, if money isn't an issue for you and you got that bag, then go for it. The improvements are nice and it's great knowing I can take loads more pictures without having to worry about going through the camera roll and deleting pictures to free up some storage. But I do want to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts on all the new features? Are you impressed? If not, let me know in the comments below and if you want to see an in-depth comparison like this compared to the iPhone 13 Pro line, just let me know down below. Alright guys, that's been it for me, but I cannot wait to catch you all in the next video.